Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial. Today we're gonna do a tutorial based primarily for um, beginners. We're gonna do a multiple part tutorial where we're gonna create this Sonos Play One speaker. Um, I thought this speaker was interesting mostly because of the simple shape, which makes it perfect for beginners, but also has these interesting, uh, intricate designs in the mesh and, and so on. So we'll be doing, we'll be looking at this uh, form that the speaker has. We'll be looking into how to create these buttons. Um, I will be skipping a few steps, like I'm not gonna create the back side of the, uh, the speaker. I'm just gonna do the front and um, make it as it looks, you know, all right for a, a decent render as a product shoot. I will also be going through in this part um, some of the basics of the 3ds Max UI interface so that you can get acquainted with that um, for total beginners uh, but if you already know how to navigate through 3ds Max and so on please just skip ahead to the next part of this tutorial. Alright so when you got 3ds Max loaded up it should look like something like this. Um, I have a few plugins uh, installed. I'm going to be using V-Ray for this tutorial uh, to create the materials, the lighting and rendering and so on. Um, but in the basics of the UI for 3ds Max is that you have these four viewports. You have perspective, front, top, left. Um, you can easily change around your viewports by using hotkeys. Um, the hotkeys for these default viewports are pretty easy. F for front, L for left, P for perspective, T for top, um, and so on. If you, to navigate through your UI interface or in the viewports, you can use this view cube um, with your left mouse button and then orbit around. You can go to front and you can go back again and so on. But an easier way to do this instead of going all the way up here every time is just to keep your um, other hand on your keyboard and using alt and mi middle mouse button to orbit around. If you don't hold, hold down alt and just use your middle mouse button you'll be um, panning around and you can zoom with the mouse wheel. If you need a little bit finer control you can hold down control and alt and middle mouse button and then move your mouse uh, back and forth to do zooms easy, uh, like that. So, in the UI we have this uh, menu over here on the right side. The first tab is Create, and under Create we have a sub-menu for Geometry, Shapes, Lights, Cameras, um, Helpers, Space Warps, and Systems. Um, for our, uh, In most cases you'll be primarily probably using um, Geometry or Shapes, and when we get into it with the rendering and the setup with materials and all of that thing, all of those kind of things, we're going to be using uh, hotkeys and um, icons from the V-Ray toolbar as well. So, um, besides having this submenu on the create, we also have a drop down list that makes, uh, that makes it possible for us to go from standard primitives, extended primitives and so on. So you can easily find a lot of different tools just working your way around here. Besides the create menu, we have the modify menu. In the modify menu, when we've created an object, we need to go into the modify menu instead um, to actually modify its settings afterwards. This is also here where you will find the modify list. It's empty right now because I don't have any objects selected, but if we just go ahead and create a box, so I go to create, geometry, box, hold down left mouse button to drag a plane out, let go of the mouse button and then just um, take the mouse up and then we have a box. If I go to, uh, I can right click to deselect the box so I don't keep creating new boxes with left, uh, left mouse button, so just right click once when you're done. Um, you can select your boxes and press delete to get rid of them. Go into your modifier list with your box selected and here you can easily modify length, width and height. You can apply length, width and height segments as well. Um, so if I press F4 on my keyboard, we can see the wireframe of the box and I can increase the segments and decrease the segments. Usually I prefer having least 
possible segments for modeling. Um, but there are cases where it might be a help to just have a few to work with to begin with. But keep it simple. Start with as few as you uh, can of segments and then add them as you need them instead of cleaning up all the time. It's easier to create what you need instead of cleaning up through too many di different segments when you actually start modeling. Um, other than that, um, it's a pretty good idea to set up some hotkeys. I have a uh, quick fix tutorial on that. You can uh, go and watch. I've, uh, I've, I'll put a link to it in the description. And also, um, I'll be using PureRef, which is on pureref.com. It's a pay what you want um, piece of software that helps you create um, a small gallery of uh, reference images that you find of the object you need to create. In this case, the Sonos Play One speaker. Um, I highly recommend getting something like this or a secondary monitor so you, you can easily see what you're working on all the time. Um, I also do recommend that you actually pay for PureRef if you uh, see yourself actually using it a lot. Uh, some guys obviously went into a lot of hard work to develop the software and it's I think it's pretty nice. So even though you can get it for free, maybe you know when you've tried it out a few times, and if you discover that it's something you'd like to use um, permanently or for a longer period of time, then you know go back and donate a bit of money for the developers so they can keep getting awesome software like this. Cool. So again, I can press delete to delete my box. I can press Alt W to increase the window size of the viewport that I'm in so that I'm, I got a, a bigger view of what I'm doing. And so this is basically the most common basics of how to create um, or how to work in your uh, in 3ds Max. Or at least that's how I work. Um, before we start, we should set up our units. Um, to do this so that we're actually working with you know a unit scale, mine is already set up for it, but I'll show you how to do this. Go to customize, go to unit setup. In the unit setup menu, Instead of being on generic units, which would be the default for FDS Max, go to metric as the display units. And I like to use centimeters. Obviously, if you're from, you know, US or whatever, and you need to use metric, you can, uh, sorry, not metric, um, imperial units, you can just, you know, use that instead. And um, for the system unit setup, go into there and tell it that one unit equals one centimeter. This would default be uh, one inches, but again, if you're working with metric system, this is you know very beneficial for you to actually use it like this. Then just press OK, and OK, and from now on, when you create an object, you should see centimeters instead of just a unitless kind of thing. So I've created this random box. This is going to be my speaker. The first thing I'm going to do is give it some measurements that equals the speaker a lot more. I looked it up earlier and should be around 12 by 12 and then 16 high. Um, another great thing to remember to do is to center your object in your scene. So in this case, I will right click on my, you can see the position of the object down here at the XYZ. I will right click on the arrows to reset them to zero. So now my speaker is um, centered or my box is centered in the 3ds Max world. I can also change my uh, object color um, to make it a little bit more pleasing. Instead of assigning random colors, I can go into a dark color. If you don't have this color here, just add custom colors. Go to find a, a decently dark color, press add color. After that, you can say OK. And from now on, when you create new objects, they will all be in this shade. So when you've created your starting objects in the box, in this case, you might want to consider um, actually going and renaming your objects so that it, it's named uh, instead of box 001, which doesn't really make sense. You might want it to be called Sonas. Um, uh, play one, zero, zero, 001. I call it zero, zero, 001 in case I need to duplicate it out. I can do this by holding shift and dragging it along one of the axes. Um, when I press OK, 
I can see that it automatically calls it 002, 003, and so on. So it increments the, the objects when you start um, copying it out. And it'll, you'll have a lot easier to see what you're doing and what your objects are because you already named them. So that's just, you know, a pretty nice thing to, uh, to keep in mind that you might, might want to do. And lastly, to actually move your object and so on, you can, um, instead of just panning around and orbiting in your viewport, you might want to move your object. To do this, you can use your move tool on the hotkey W, E for rotate, and R for scale. Um, do bear in mind that if you press R multiple times, it'll change the way you scale, so it's not necessarily a uniform scale. You can you, you can see the move, rotate, and uh, scale options up here. Um, but keep in mind that your scale might not work as you intended because you pressed R multiple times, so it'll squash and stretch and so on. Um, so just you know bear that in mind. Other than that, um, you have the option to use angle snap on A. So if you press A, you can see angle snap is toggled on. So now it'll rotate in increments of five until unless we tell it otherwise. Um, and yeah, that's basically a very quick rundown of the FDS Max interface. Um, if you'd like to have a more in-depth version of this, uh, please let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next tutorial where we'll be looking into modeling this Sonos Play One speaker. All right? See ya.